but everybody keeps asking about what are my miles per gallon? And I kind of want to laugh, but I do, I do get the question. This is a huge motor with a big cam in like a 7,000 pound Jeep on 40s and tons. And like, you just have to sometimes kind of take the loss at that. Actually, I would guarantee you that with this swap, you're probably getting better fuel economy than with the 3.6. What's up, Life Right Nation? So, we cannot sleep. I cannot stop with the stepchild. You know that. We're out here in California. I'm with my buddy Josh West, who tuned our Ultra 4 car. He tunes pretty much most of the Ultra 4 car field. He did a fantastic job on that. He tunes anything and everything. And although, you know, we have a new motor in this, uh, we had dyno results from the uh, engine company who built the 426 Hemi. That's just kind of like the cams locked. They go full throttle and it just gives you an overview. They're making sure the motor's healthy. They're making sure uh, it's running right, there's no noises, and uh, give you a, a, a good power figure. But it's not a tuned setup. That's just the way that is. And since we are the first ones with this, uh, we just kinda had a base tune on it. Like uh, America's Most Wanted just had a good base tune on it. Start, ran, you heard it, you've seen us driving it. Been all over the country, it's great. But now we're here to actually put it on a dyno, put it to the test, see where we're what we've been driving and then where my buddy josh can take it so we're actually here in california at maximum trans who also built our transmission for the ultra four car and they build like everybody's transmission anyhow we're so we're going to get you a base dyno run on where it was at then we're going to tune the cam he's going to go through and make a bunch of changes to the cam find out where that bigger cam wants to be advanced retarded all that kind of stuff um and then we're gonna kinda go through and clean everything up and make things as perfect as possible. And I think America's Most Wanted might possibly be using this tune once we're done because uh, it's brand new. We're the first ones with it and this guy knows what the heck he's doing. Um, I have pretty good and high hopes for it. So before we get started, Let's do some guesses on what kind of power it makes. Keep in mind, it's going through a transmission, a transfer case, heavy uh, drive shafts, an 80 rear end, which is heavy axle shafts, big gears, big heavy gears. It isn't turning the 40s and the wheels. So that actually saves about 163 pounds of rotational mass off of each corner. Um, so it'll be a little bit different than an actual rolling dyno, being as the hub dyno. So I'm kind of curious as to your guesses, the engine uh, dyno was 600, like one horsepower and 609 foot-pounds of torque. So this will really show you the drivetrain loss through there. Uh, so go ahead and guess on that. And then of course, we're gonna be doing what we can, tune it, everything out in Michigan where uh, America's Most Wanted is at, is 93 octane, sea level. We're, we're a couple thousand feet where we're at now, but really bad octane here in California. And it's about, uh, I don't know, 103 degrees out today. So. I guess let's see. All right, what did you guess? All right, there we go. So 380 foot pounds of torque, 351 horsepower, you can see. There's the 400 line, 300 line. So it's nearly making that torque from like 2600 RPM, 3000 RPM. It's at 300 and it kind of rises. So you're pretty much above 300 foot pounds of torque the whole time. And then your horsepower, you can see, start is climbing, climbing, climbing. It crosses the 300 mark right around 4,100. It continues to climb, and it just kind of flattens out. So it's a very flat torque curve, which is pretty good. The horsepower, I think, will be able to kind of make it continue to climb because the torque doesn't drop off too hard. But we'll see. So that's actually pretty dang. Uh, that's pretty dang close to what I was thinking. Okay, so not too bad. Um, it's really hard to film in there because they have. And I'll show you. They have this uh, machine that it has the transmissions in them, That's a, it's a tumbler. That cleans them all up and it's nearly impossible. You can probably hear it in the background a little bit, but it's nearly impossible to film in there. So it laid out some good power and kind of just what we thought, it's very conservative. Now you gotta think that this is a 600 plus horsepower motor. So putting down mid 300s right now, we should be up close to 400. Uh, even the Ultra 4 car, that's what it did, because have, we have a lot of drivetrain loss, right? So we've got a big trans that is gonna rob power. The trans is gonna rob some power. We've got really heavy canyon crawler drive shafts, 
well, just the rear one, it's not in four wheel drive that we're doing this. Uh, we've got a really big diff, we've got big axles, it's spinning a lot of stuff. So you're gonna have 30, maybe even 40% drivetrain loss. I think on the Ultra 4 car, it was somewhere between 35 and 40%. So my hopes are that we're right around the 380 to 400 horsepower mark and probably about 400 to 430 uh, uh, foot pounds of torque because that's going to be at the hub. So that's that, that's going to be pretty decent and feel pretty dang good. It, it looks very promising right now. So we have that pull. Josh is going to go ahead and we're going to start with the cam. He's going to lock the cam at zero. And then from there, he can change it any amount of degrees he wants, but I think he was going to go, I think, four degrees at a time and do a full pull. But do, do the cam four degrees across the entire band so that way you can see where the peaks and valleys are and then and keep changing it four degrees from I think 126 is where it starts and then go all the way down to like 114 or one somewhere in there but anyhow that's what we'll try and then that way he can see where in the power band it likes the cam and then put those values the 114 118 120 122 whatever it is in there to make the, the right amount of power for that cam and then we can move on to the ignition timing All right, so I had him shut the machine off for a minute so we could actually talk. So this is Josh. I know you guys met Josh in the uh, Ultra 4 videos. Proper tuning. He does tune everything, but um, it's, a, like, it's a very conservative tune we're starting with, right? Like right. it was just kind of, it got us started. We've driven across the country. We're good. But from what you're seeing in there, it looks like we've got a ton of, a ton of play, a ton of room for improvement. Right. Yeah, yeah a lot just of numbers, just ones and zeros. Just ones and zeros. <laughs> and just to see what it wants and likes. Everything's different per rig. Yeah. So the way they had it set up, um, from what I understand, is the cam was just pretty much like locked out and safe. And now he's going to actually make the cam move. Right. Well, right. We, You're going to go through. We went through and swept the cam for torque. Basically, what we did was lock it out in different positions, and we kept doing pulls. And then we overlaid all of the runs so we could literally pick our cam plot for movement and where we want it. Right. So yep. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll have him put that up here when he's done doing this, yep. and I'll kind of walk you guys through each of them, sort of the best I can. Right. But just so you know, kind of know what we're talking about. So not all vehicles, but most new vehicles, you can actually adjust the cam electronically. Right. right? There's well, like a it's phaser. oil. Yeah. It's, it's oil, oil pressure. pressure. Oil pressure with the electric solenoids. So this one's single cam. Obviously, you know, with dual or quad overhead cam you can move both of them and change load that separation. seems like a way so more pain in the ass don't follow each other but <laughs> on this one it's just a single cam so we can only advance it or retard it but with rpm with little bits of advance and retard on smaller cams you still gain a substantial amount of power yeah so let me show you that on the screen okay okay so there's no point in showing you guys all of the pulls but if you look here so 124 118 that's the degrees the cam is at and what what's locked out 126? Uh, zero on this is 120. Like if you unplug the phaser, it'd be 126. So basically zero would be 126. So, so what he did oh, is I'm you- sorry, 128. 128? Yeah, yeah, 128. Okay. So what we did here was each pull, he changed the entire cam through the whole entire RPM range to each one of these degrees. So one, uh, 124, 116. And so now he's gonna bring them up and overlay them and you'll see why he did the entire thing here in just a second. We'll explain that. All right, so this here is just the cam sweep. So since they're locked out, you can see, well, this yellow one was locked out at what? Do you remember? That was 124? Uh, 190 is 116. So it's 116, 120, 124. Okay, so 116, 120, 124. So you can see here at 116, it did not like it on the low end, but it did like it on the top end. So right here, you can already see, you want 116 on the top end. You definitely don't want 116 on the low end. And then... This was 120, you said? Well, yeah, I keep yeah, forgetting. Four. <laughs> yeah, we did four degree. Increase. Right, and so that, that got better, but what's better is this one here. So you can literally see where they're making power and then where you want to switch them. So this is your this is your horsepower number and this is your torque. So you're basically looking at both of these and seeing where you want it. So you're gonna choose right. pretty much the we one only, that has yeah, the highest, we right? We really care about the torque line and where they all cross each other. Right. We, we don't have to look at the horsepower line because the torque line is still gonna show us the same thing. As torque goes up, horsepower obviously goes up. Right. So we really, all we're matching is degree placement versus max torque. Right, so there you go. So that you look through here and find out where you want it. So it looks like you want the blue most the entire way and then you want the yellow on the top end, which made it pretty easy. Right, and the only reason we're showing these three is because 
less movement and more movement yielded way less power. So right. These were the three that were all tightest and closest to each other. So we basically just made a progressive ramp from peak torque to peak torque. I think it starts at what, 126 and we ended up at 118 and that all comes in across the RPM range. And we just based it on where it happens peak torque wise. So the light blue is gonna be no cam movement, locked out, and red is with full cam movement everywhere. So this is locked out with no cam movement, just having it at zero. And then you saw all the sweeps. And then after he was done with all the sweeps, we picked the proper cam timing. Okay, he picked the proper cam timing. And, uh, and this is what we ended up with. Now, this was... Yeah, so this is with no other tuning yet. That's no fuel, that's no ignition timing, that's no nothing. Right. Right. So that's just the start of this. And then from there, we're going to, we'll keep going. So this is, uh, this is pretty exciting because that's going to already feel like a completely different motor. And although this is super fun, I'm really interested in the Demon Child because big supercharger, big motor, lots of boost. Um, I know those are pretty dialed, but I kind of want Josh to play with that one too. Um, you know, they, they, cars come with demons, they, they have good files, and I know America's Most Wanted has been doing it for a, a while, but um, I don't know, I just want Josh to play with it. I, I want to bring it here and just see. Maybe it's maxed out and we're good, maybe not, I don't, I don't know, but I sure want to put it on the dyno and find out. So now that he's made a couple changes to the, to the timing and the cam, we're gonna go ahead and do some more pulls and see exactly what happens. Now, if you're wondering how we're doing all this, don't mind all these wires right now. Everything's for HP tuners. So we have this little dongle down here. It's the MPVI-2. They make a, a few different kinds. I know they're coming with that MPVI-3 and HP tuner software. So that's pretty neat. That integrates, and I'll show you on his laptop. We're getting ready to go do some uh, changes um, out here. So. We're just sitting in the truck, it's more comfortable, and do some changes. But HP Tuners is gonna allow us to either run without the neural network and do everything um, kind of old school way. It's not really old school, but uh, run everything off of uh, volumetric efficiency tables. But as of like, I think a year or two ago, um, they actually came out with their own neural network program for the new Gen 5 stuff. The neural network, you have to build it, but then you have to put it in into a program that HP Tuners wrote into some software system that they wrote that and converts it all? So the big difference between normal VE, which is just a lookup table, basically it's pressure over RPM. Instead of a lookup table, think of neural or anything really Gen 5 as it's calculating airflow as you go. It's more of a coefficient based. So what we're doing is correcting those calculations so it can calculate the air, you know, as, as we go. But as, you know, it's stock, it's, it can't, fix itself over, you know, engines and stroker now, cam's different, everything's completely different. Right. So we basically have to go back through and retrain the neural network to calculate the correct amount of airflow. The good thing about calculating airflow is you also calculate torque. If you know air, you know torque. And then a lot of these systems are all torque based as well. So if the airflow has to match, the torque has to match, everything has to match. That's why a lot of times if you go different gear, different tire, all of a sudden they shift like crap. Well, they shift like crap because the torque's different. So now you have to come back through and recalculate all the torque for the new gear ratio. Which most people don't end up doing. Well, that's yeah. all, yeah. So then they just, you know, attribute crappy shifting to a gut tires change or gears change or the lift or whatever, but that's not true. That's what we're using right now is HP tuners. This wasn't available like when we first got our Jeep and we put the turbo kit on it. You couldn't tune the neural network and there was no information um, in the system for turning off the neural network because there are no volumetric efficiency tables defined. Um, so you'd have to do that from scratch, which is also time consuming. So we're only filming this like it's in a day or two, but we're spending probably a, a whole week because we're doing, he's doing a lot. We're making sure that this is gonna be uh, as awesome and, and bulletproof as possible. It's really interesting to see all this because there's like in the stock ECU, not that we're using them all, but there's something like 30,000 tables or something like that. Like if you cut like between all of the 
things that you could change. It's like a 30,000 combination thing. Now we're not using all that. And wait till we get into the transmission stuff. When I show you the screen on the transmission stuff, it's just like, I don't even want to get started on it because it looks so daunting. But when you have somebody that knows what they're doing. It's a little, it's definitely a little easier. I'm using this as learning time for me as well. So we're kind of spending a lot of time together as he's going through some of this stuff. But here, I'll show you the computer screen for a second so you kind of see him clicking on stuff. So as you see at the top right here, you have all these tabs, general, idle, speed density, airflow. So this is just one section of tabs and each one has all of these things underneath it to change and make sure it's right. There's a reason why we have it on a hub dyno instead of a regular dyno, because we need the axle torque so we can back calculate engine torque and, and, and. I mean, it, <laughs> there's, there's reasons for all of this, but everything works together in these. And if you don't understand how a like coefficient or airflow calculating system works, and you're used to the Gen 3, Gen 4, kind of where it'll calculate a VE table for you, this is a whole different ballgame. Yeah, it's quite a lot. It's not as simple as just getting a junkyard motor thrown in and it working anymore, not in new vehicles. So I'm glad the HP Tuners has this available and is allowing us to actually do this. All right, so we're diving a little further in here. You can see I have all these different layers uh, for the neural network here. So Josh was just telling me about with the neural network, everything runs off of air volume and pressures. The engine has, like it can take a barometric pressure reading and it also takes like a, a map sensor reading. It reads those pressures and with everything that he's putting in here, it's gonna have tables to look it up and know what to do. So the higher you go in elevation, the less pressure there is, the more timing you can run. If you run the same timing at sea level as you did it, 14,000 feet, you'd make, you'd have 50 horsepower out of this thing. So it's all calculated, it's all gonna work. It's a lot of computer trickery that has to go on here. At the higher up in elevation you go, it's almost like having less compression in the motor. Right. Well, right? There's, less, there's less air right. to compress. Okay, there's less air to compress because there's physically less air. What we're doing with this, a neural or a coefficient based or a real-time airflow calculation based, anything that's using pressure ratio and temperature and everything else to calculate airflow. We're not physically making a VE table. We're basically making a final result. The ECM actually uses right here. Every bit of the VE table is based on parts of an equation. So what we have to do is come back through and figure that equation out. And that's where the trainer comes in. Basically, we're making a virtual volumetric table, which <laughs> then by HP Tuner gets back calculated to the equation to make that table. <laughs> I don't know how in depth we're going here or how interesting this is. I find this fascinating because I've messed with some tuning on cars, but I'm talking about, I went in and I pulled a little bit of fuel out where it was rich just to kind of lean it up and make more power. And then where it said like at peak torque, where it said like three or four degrees of timing, I put in like one or two more. These are like on my Mitsubishi Evo 8 and Evo right, 9. Right, right. It's very rudimentary, but that's all, that's about as far as I know. All yeah. the stuff he's going over. On a system like that, we're not worrying about this equation. What we're mapping is the physical air through the throttle body, which then the, it'll get back calculated off of that. With a system like that, I can take one of these off-road like an Ultra 4 car with a higher stall converter and I can take a brand new car, never tuned, leave it strapped on the trailer and lean on the converter and map majority of the throttle body and be almost 80% done with the tune. Yeah, that's crazy. Minutes. So it's, that's aftermarket computer. So yeah. Mtron, who, yeah, who said he's working for, like we could use that on the Jeep, but because the Jeep, the, all the new vehicles run a CAN bus system, there's like CAN bus coding and that becomes like- Well, yeah, we would have to come back and define that is craziness. something, yeah, if, if we wanted to take the time to do it or if we could access it through Chrysler or whoever and we had that CAN protocol and the messaging that we needed for the chassis and everything else, we could literally implement a CAN protocol to run that. Right, so if you're, if you say you're building an Ultra 4 car or you're building a drift car or a rally car or even if you already have something like a Subaru or whatever other, they have drop-in ECUs, it gives you so much more control. It's so much easier than trying to go through factory stuff. With factory, we're locked into that constraint of this is how they want to run it. So we have to change our thinking and build everything that the way that that ECU is operating. Right. So we but have to operate within these parameters right. where if we went standalone, we'd just do whatever we wanted and be able to right. run it way more. Right. But then you're back to emissions, legality, and right. That's and, 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 and. All right, so we have the neural network turned on. We have everything kind of situated the way we can until we can start tuning on it. 
I say we, he. So we're gonna do a first start and see how this works out because this is all this is all fresh. So let's see how she goes. We're kind of thinking about it. We kind of want a stock 3.6 to come out and uh, and tune it to see what kind of power we can get out. We thought that might be kind of fun. But uh, if you guys are interested in tuning, um, you know, this is out here in California. We're in Hesperia, Maximum Trans. Good Lord, that sounds different. So what's really cool about this dyno, um, he can put load on it at any speed, any RPM. And so now he can go through gears and he can load it up lightly like you're just cruising down the road or like if you were to be pulling a big hill or if you're in sand dunes, he can literally mimic all that and map it all out and see the timing, see the fueling and see all that. Basically right now he's going to get into a torture test. He's going to really like really work the engine, really work the trans. And what's really nice about this is we don't have to do this on the road. At the end we'll road test it. So he's torture testing right now looking at the timing numbers, making sure that there's no detonation, looking at all the fueling numbers to make sure that it's not too lean, not too rich, um, and start locking that in. So, uh, I don't know, it's really interesting. I, I find this stuff interesting. Yeah, just kind of kind of make sure it's 100% good. So it's all gone really well on the dyno so far. All the numbers look great, everything looks safe, so we're gonna unbolt it, put the wheels and tires back on it, and actually go drive it and see how good it feels. We're gonna be in low, high. Yeah, this is going, this is going really great so far. So now what's going to be fun is taking this thing on the street and seeing how it feels because we remapped we. I keep saying we. When I say we, I mean Josh or Chris or whoever's doing the actual work, but uh, I do help. Anyhow, uh, we're, we remapped the throttle. Um, you can remap high and low range. So we did go through there and make some changes uh, to the throttle pedal and uh, in high and low so we can do both and see how that feels i think it's going to turn out pretty good um, compared to where it was set out a little bit more aggressive in high range and really kind of dumbed down in low range so i have a lot more feel or travel so it's not so touchy in low range and the vehicle already does that so when you put it into low and you see the little dash say low that selects another throttle map for you so that's pretty cool and then one thing we're also working on is newer jl's jt's have an off-road plus button and that changes your transmission mapping and your throttle mapping to be even more aggressive. So we're working with Taser to see if we can't use a button on the steering wheel or the dash to activate an off-road plus button. And then Josh is going to actually find those maps within the ECU. Maybe we can copy over from a newer vehicle, take those maps and copy those over to that. So then any pre like 21 JLs, JTs that don't have the off-road plus button will then have that ability to have the off-road plus button. So that would be... Pretty neat. If you haven't driven one with it, it does make quite a difference in your driving experience at the time. It holds the revs longer. It uh, shifts faster. It does kind of a lot of cool things. One thing I'm also curious about is the miles per gallon. Everybody's wondering, did the 426, did we lose a bunch? And so far, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe one to two miles of the gallon is what I'm noticing. But I have a feeling now after being tuned on the dyno and running it around the street some, I have a feeling we're going to probably be the same, if not better than the 392, just because of the efficiency Josh was able to pull out. So far, everything seems great. I kind of, you know, we took it for a little drive. And uh, now we're going to take you guys with us. Um, we got different fan settings put in, so it hopefully runs cooler. So there, there was a lot of things that were changed on this that I think the whole Jeep community whether you're in a two liter turbo or three six, um, but especially any of the Hemi swaps that, you know, we're basically customizing it to kind of more the way I want it to feel. And I'm pretty excited about that. So let's go drive it and see how she feels. All right, let's get this baby started. Uh, let's see what she feels like. Oh, Josh was driving, I can't touch the pedals. So one thing I noticed, it does sound and feel like it's revving way faster in neutral. So one of the first things here, that you'll notice is it, it's gonna run way cooler now because we actually changed the fan settings. It's only 88 right now, but it'll be probably 110 or so in the desert when we get driving, so we'll see what happens here. But we did change it so that the vehicle's gonna stay cooler a lot longer. And I also did go to a lot of um, more water in the radiator because water dissipates heat faster. So it does have some coolant, but I went to a, a more diluted mix. So we'll see what happens here as we go. But uh, I also want to show you how fast this thing revs up now once this is fully warmed up. Like I said earlier, one of the major things I know everybody asks about, and I, and I get it, I guess, because gas is so expensive right now, but everybody keeps asking about what are my miles per gallon? And I kind of want to laugh, but I do, I do get the question. 
This is a huge motor with a big cam and like a 7,000 pound Jeep on 40s and tons. And like, you just have to sometimes kind of take the loss at that. I can guarantee you we're not getting any worse gas mileage than a 3.6 if it was built the same way. If this was a fully built Jeep with a stock motor, actually, I would guarantee you that with this swap, you're probably getting better fuel economy than with the 3.6. We're gonna go ahead and test that out here in just a little bit once we get out on the highway. I can tell you, cruising at like 40, 50 miles an hour and getting between 16 and 19 miles a gallon, just like on a flat road cruising, because I, I did that a little bit yesterday. But I really want to see what it does at 70 miles an hour um, and see if it's any worse than the 392. Technically, engines are just air pumps. If there's more air, there needs more fuel, so I would assume it's worse, but maybe not, because maybe I have to use less throttle. So we'll, we'll find that out here in a minute. All right, so we're cruising at 70 miles an hour. You can see that there on the screen. Um, we are on flat ground, completely flat ground in California. I don't know if I have a tailwind or what. This is the first time I've had it on the highway. I don't think there's any way I could be getting 20 miles a gallon. I know, I know what it says, but we must have a tailwind because <laughs> that doesn't seem. I was thinking 14, 15. We'll have to try this again later on the flat ground. We will be going through the mountains here pretty soon. You can see up there. So we'll be going through the mountains and obviously that is going to knock it down, but I don't think this is a good representation yet, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Okay, so this is the first time I've had it on the highway since we did the tuning. I've had it on the street, like I said, I was getting 16 to 19 at like 45, 50 miles an hour. It's rock solid right now at 19, 20, so I, I, that can't, that can't be right. <laughs> There's no way. Like, I don't even think a stock 36 gets, gets 20 miles a gallon. But uh, so far, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> All right, let's see what she does at 80 real quick. No way. Our gauge is broken. I mean, I'm probably kidding, it's not broken, it's always worked, but I don't know. 80 miles an hour is pretty pretty fast. Normally you're getting like 10 miles a gallon, nine miles a gallon, 80. It's rock, hold steady at 14, 15 right now. That'd be pretty dope. I'd rather take 70 at 20 miles a gallon. <laughs> I guess it depends how far I'm driving. This is, this is pretty neat. This is definitely, if this is, real this is gonna be definitely really neat I'm uh, pretty excited about this <laughs> all right now that we've been driving a while we're out in the desert it's almost 100 degrees and we're going up and down the mountains nothing's flat out here anymore looks like we're averaging at 70 miles an hour right at 15 miles of the gallon uh, I have no idea what the wind is outside you can always hear wind in a Jeep right so I don't I don't know and there's no trees uh, I have not come out of eighth gear yet it just accelerates and I normally get going up the hill right around 10 or 11 and then flat and I'm around 14 or 15. So I'm going to continue to monitor as we make it all the way through the mountains here from California back to Vegas or all the way to Utah. That's pretty dang good. I mean we're talking about a 426 cubic inch motor, 600 horsepower on 40s, tons, armor. I mean we're a 6,500 pound vehicle-ish. Maybe with jelly in it, 6,600 pounds. <laughs> so it's not a hundred out yet i wanted it to get like 105 110 so i'm sitting at 203 degrees ec on here let me go to 80 really quick just to give you an idea uh so here we go at 80 i don't think 12 11 12 is bad for 80 miles an hour when it's 100 degrees outside so slight grade uh just enough to tell you're going up a grade 10, 11, that's why it's at 10, I think. So we're just about to crest the peak right now. And uh, look, see, yeah, we're right at the peak of it. And yeah, so not terrible. I can run an 80 with everybody here um, all day, I guess. And still get, I think that's pretty freaking decent. And here we're about to go downhill. So now we're going down a hill a little bit and it's creeping back up. So that's pretty awesome. I'm definitely super happy with that. Again. I don't think you do a 426 cubic inch stroked hemi swap uh, for good gas mileage, but I guess it does help if you know, kind of, I like it so I know my range, I know my distance, so if I'm traveling across the desert, I'm not hopping my pants down, so to speak. Um, I've done that a few times where we've ran out of gas, we've almost ran out of gas. There was that one guy in New Mexico, we were outside of Roswell, and some guy gave me a little Bible thing and gave me a gallon of gas. 
and then asked for forty dollars. That was really cool of him. I couldn't believe it. He literally gave me this little prayer book and a gallon of I don't know how old the fuel was. He's like, "Oh, make sure you pay it forward." And he's like, "Um, you think forty bucks is fair?" And I'm like, "For a gallon of gas." Oh, uh, sure, buddy. Sure. It got me into town and got me. Uh, maybe I think it was two gallons, so twenty dollars a gallon. Not bad for the middle of the desert. But it got me the 15 miles we were out of town. Um, but, uh, I, guys, I am super happy with this. I don't think this has ever, like, just been this cohesive of a, of a unit and, and build as it is right now. I'm super stoked about this. Now, what I really can't wait to do is get the Demon Child onto the dyno at Josh's and see what kind of numbers we can put down with that. That Those we will overlay the 426 and the Demon and show you, like, the amount of torque the supercharger adds. It's going to be... It's gonna be insane. All right, so we are up to 106 degrees ambient temperature, and you can see the coolant temps are pretty rock solid. Anywhere from 212 up to 220, um, depending on if we're going up a grade. Might get up to 220, 221, then drop again. And uh, yeah, which is fine. Honestly, when we looked at the original fan settings of the OEM file, it doesn't turn on like the low fan until like 218 or something. And then the high fan doesn't come on until like 223 or 225. So it's trying to literally get you to run between 218 and 225. Now the vehicle will go into lip mode at like 253 or 255 um, coolant temperature. So really 220, 230, not really a big deal. 235, 240, I mean, you're still fine. When you hit about 245, I'd really look at pulling over, shutting the AC off, like if something was like to happen. This is just kind of a general knowledge for you guys. Uh, but in the Jeep itself, the factory safety is about 253, 255. So, I mean, that's where we're at. Everything's great. So we're doing 75 to 80. It's getting that 12 to 13 there. It, it really is doing very, very good. And we're, uh, we're what, an hour and a half into the drive so far. So, um, I, yeah, I got nothing. I'll give you an update towards the end, but this is very exciting for the 426. And what we really need to do is get a 392 out to Josh and see if he can't massage and work any magic on that. And then it's time for the demon and the Hellcat and the elephant and all that kind of stuff. Cause I think that would be uh, really good content and see overlay all the dyno numbers on the same dyno with the same tuner with all the power plants that America's Most Wanted has to offer. And you can really see uh, what's up with that. So uh, we'll let you guys know when we get done. So we made it into Vegas and we averaged 12.6 across the desert. We were doing usually 77 to 80. We're back down to 70 and we're, you can see we're right back to the good fuel mileage. So I, I mean, we're, and I made it on one tank of gas which I haven't done that before. Um, like this is like flat ground, I don't really understand. It's doing great. This is 70 miles an hour, here you go. So I guess that's the success. That's a, that's a great trip that we took and it turned out, uh, I guess as good as I could have imagined. We're getting fantastic fuel economy. It's got a lot of power. It feels great. I love the throttle pedal that we did. We do also have the Ultimate 9, which used to be the iDrive. So I don't have it plugged in right now, but I can even plug that in and get even more aggressive with it or desensitize it. But I wanted something that was there right in the middle all the time. And uh, that's where, I don't know what else to say. It got up to 109 degrees. Coolant temp went up to like, tw like 28, I think. The Baker grade now is a long freaking grade and it did get warmer there, but AC on, it even says at the bottom to turn your AC off in hot conditions. It was 100, 910 climbing the Baker grade. If you don't know about it, it's a super long grade that takes like, it's like a half an hour long climb up over this mountain. And everybody goes, slows down from 80 to like 65 because it's just super taxing. But the AC still stayed cold the whole way. Got a little warmer than I wanted to, but it didn't, um, it didn't actually get all the way to overheating. So I'm happy. Thank you, Josh. I, I'm excited for the uh, Demon to go on the on the dyno now and show you guys really the difference between a naturally aspirated motor that makes good power and a supercharged motor from the factory that is just going to be insane. You're going to see this like torque curve. There's not going to be a curve. It's just going to look like a tabletop and go up and just carry all the way out across. And, you'll, and we'll show you the difference between naturally aspirated and the supercharger and how that's so cool and why that works. So 
So thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all of your Light Bright Nation merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. We love you, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Come here, Jelly. Bye, Jelly. Bye, Jelly. Oh, I love you. 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 And he's gonna go through all loads, phrasing. That's but with my arms like burning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't been to the gym this week. I know.